Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. We're down here in Cannon Falls, and we found yet another house for sale with a secret cave behind it. Cannon Falls is a small town just south of Minneapolis and St. Paul. Like many Minnesota communities, it sits on a bedrock of St. Peter's sandstone, essentially a fossilized 450 million year old beach. The sandstone is easy to dig and carve without needing artificial supports, and it stays at a constant temperature of about 50 to 60 degrees. Many historic breweries, mushroom farms, and other industries took advantage of this in the old days, and a lot of southern Minnesota towns still have sandstone caves or tunnels of some sort. We've previously toured a home in Rochester with an extensive cave behind it, as seen in another video in this channel. When the home in Cannon Falls popped up for sale, I knew we had to take a look. The Cannon Falls house is a 1970s split level with three bedrooms upstairs and one downstairs. It sits partway up a hill and has a view out over the surrounding neighborhood. So this house is up a little bit from the rest of the neighborhood, and then I think the property actually includes about an acre of hillside here. So it's a little bit larger than your normal residential lot. And of course having that cave is very unique in uh, most of the residential properties around here. The interior has recently been remodeled with new paint and carpet. It also has a newer heating and air system. The attached garage is partly buried in the hillside, which helps regulate the temperature. Now, there's no connection to the sandstone cave from inside the house. You have to go out through the patio doors in the dining room, or walk around to the back. Here's our first look at the cave. So this particular cave is a little bit smaller than the house we looked at in Rochester. We're not quite sure what the purpose of this cave is. It's a very interesting design, kind of a big triangle, and it has this curving dogleg tunnel coming into the entrance. Sometimes a dogleg like that would be for a bomb shelter to block radiation, so it's possible this is from the 1950s, or it could be older. It could be from a brewery, or it could have been used as a root cellar. We're not really sure. As with a lot of caves in the Midwest, this one has some graffiti on the walls. Now I think this is St. Peter's sandstone. It's the right color, but something that I've not seen before is evidence of actual fossils. I'm pretty sure that's what these little harder white structures are in the walls. They almost look like little shells or little tubes. And I've heard that there are fossils in St. Peter's sandstone, but I don't know that I've ever actually seen them before personally. So these are kind of cool. I'm going to have to go home and look up what these are. The St. Peter sandstone was originally an ancient beach sand, so these are quite possibly little beach creatures or sea creatures that were fossilized when this all turned into a rock. Nowadays these caves do support some life. I've got a cave moth up here on the ceiling. And then uh, we've got a particularly large cave cricket here. This guy's pretty cool. I don't know if he's technically a blind cricket. He does seem to have some eyes, but he has some pretty big antenna as well. There are no bats in here currently, although I do see some evidence of bats. i get some little droppings here on these shelves. Here's that angled passage going back out to the house. A little niche full of stuff. Got some cave security here. And then the cave comes right out to your back deck and patio doors. When you've got a cave that's just open like this to the outside world, you get a lot of moss and lichen and stuff growing on the sandstone walls, at least as far back as the light reaches. The humidity in here is pretty high, like it is with most sandstone caves, so this green stuff just grows on the wall with natural uh, surrounding humidity and then what little bit of natural light comes in this far. So here in the backyard, we're looking up at the sandstone bluff. It almost looks like there could have been a little cellar or cave there at some point. 
And then we've got that back patio coming in from the other side. And there's definitely more sandstone here. There's another little hole right here. And this little hole is only a few feet deep. Doesn't really go anywhere. So we're looking back behind this fence. There's an old, looks like abandoned pond or fountain. And then I don't know if this little hole was a, a part of that, if it was a garden feature or water feature, something like a grotto. And it definitely used to be something built in before they put this fence in. Since we were here as part of an open house tour, I asked Dan, the realtor, if he could tell us a little bit more about the property. My name is Dan Linder with Dan Linder Real Estate. We're at 407 East uh, Mill Street in Cannon Falls. Um, so we've got a four bedroom, two bathroom, um, 2,000, 2,200 square foot house. Uh, brand new carpet, brand new flooring throughout the house. Um, and the best thing is this thing's got a cave. Um, so you can, uh, it's solid 68 degrees all year round. Um, you can watch movies out there, hang out, and the local internet company said that they could wire fiber optics into the cave, so you don't have to worry about Wi-Fi or anything like that, so it's kind of cool. Um, the furnace and stuff downstairs, um, that's, that's relatively new. It has a, a bacteria and virus uh, electronic filter to filter them, a built-in humidifier throughout the whole house, and the water here is only a year old, so there's a lot of, a lot of updated things in the house. Everything's redone. It's moving ready, um, and you have no neighbors in back because it's all wooded around, so you're shaded. Um, it's like living in the country, but yet still have access to being in the town. Let nice. me you know if you need to, if you need anything. My phone number six one two five nine seven five four five six. Thanks a lot. So this cave is smaller than the one we saw in Rochester, but the lot size of this property is much larger. If a new owner wanted to expand their underground space, it would be really easy to dig more. I'm actually working on a project like that in Wisconsin. Check out the Sandland videos on this channel for more about underground tunneling and making your own sandstone caves. I did some more research back home and confirmed that this is in fact St. Peter sandstone based on the geology maps and the well records for the area. Now as far as the fossils, I still haven't found a comprehensive answer to that. Some of the most common fossils reported in St. Peter sandstone are scolithos or fossilized burrows of tube worms. The ones we were seeing seem to have some kind of actual worm body or shell in it. There's also been reports of fossilized clams, snails, and other shelled creatures in the sandstone, although we didn't see those here. Anyway, I thought it was really cool to see these fossils, and if you buy this house, you would have a literal cross-section through an ancient beach, including ancient sea creatures. How cool is that? Now, we never found much history on this actual cave. It's probably too small to have been a brewery. It's on Mill Street, but all of the mills were over on the other side of town by the river. There are a few suspicious things on old Sanborn fire maps that make me think there might be some other caves in town, such as these dotted lines behind various businesses along bluff sides. The entrance design did make me think of a fallout shelter, and the house was built during the Cold War, but the cave might be older than the house. We don't really know for sure. If anyone out there does, I'd love to know about it in the comments. Now, I'm posting this video on Monday, the 12th of September, and we actually just saw this house over the weekend. I normally don't post my videos this quickly after filming them, but since the house is still for sale, and it probably won't last long on the market, I wanted to get the video out there, uh, get people aware of this. If anybody is looking for a really cool house with a really cool cave behind it, this might be the one. If you are interested in buying or touring this house, contact Dan Linder, the realtor. I'll throw his contact info down in the description as well. If you're watching this video a few weeks or months later and the house is already sold, well, sorry you missed out. I hope this video has been interesting. We definitely thought it was worth the day trip to run down to Cannon Falls and check out this cave and this house. I'm always on the lookout for cave properties for sale like this in the upper Midwest, so if anyone out there knows of one, or knows of another cave around Cannon Falls or anywhere in Minnesota, let me know in the comments or shoot me an email and I might go check it out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.